Moving on to our main topic of the evening. Oh, do we have to? Here's where things might fall apart. You know, varying opinions on stuff. We all know that the Xbox One was announced last, well, not last week, but the features and stuff were highlighted last week at E3. And a lot of people didn't like them because of very restrictive DR policies. Were they, though? (laughs) Because I feel like they were kind of of highlighted. Let me reword this. They're kind of, sort of. They were they were yeah. highlighted in in May, but then they weren't very clear. And then after the event in May, they were like, "Well, you could do this as well, but only if you do this," which kind of contradicts this. And then E3, they came out and just like, "Okay, look, here's here's straight up what it is. We're gonna be straight up. Nope. It, you can only do this if you do this while you're doing this, but you can't do this on top of doing this as well if you want your friends to do this." <laughs> And then after the event, they were just yeah. like, wait, you what does that me. even mean? Like, can we even do this? Like, okay, look, let me just clear this up even further. You can actually do that only if you're doing this and this at the same time as your friend is doing this as well. Does that make sense? What? <laughs> okay, you know what? Fine, by the way, we're not going to do any of that anymore. Yeah. So uh, Microsoft has made the decision uh, it was yesterday, right? A week, not even a week after E3 ended, to reverse all of the DRM policies and online policies for Xbox One. So Which now there was, were apparently set in stone. Uh, all I gotta say is in the, apparently yes. In the immortal words of Vin Diesel, "Too soon, Junior." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there is no more internet connection requirement. Uh, console no longer has to check in every 24 hours for your software. All game discs will work on the Xbox One as they do on the Xbox 360. Um, the only internet that is required is for a day one patch that is required for setup on the console. Which is a little bit confusing. I heard all this mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, they're just, wow, they're they're really taking everything out. And then I read that and it's just like, wait. Well, it was like telling if... people that there was internet required on day one for the Wii U because none of their online functionality shipped with the console. But y- you don't need the online functionality if you don't have internet. Oh. <laughs> so you don't need the patch. <laughs> so you need to have internet so you could not have internet. You need internet. to have internet <laughs> yes. so you could not have internet, yes. Um, all downloaded games will function the same, online or offline. Uh, no additional restrictions on trading games or loaning discs, so you can just give your discs to your friends. You can trade them back in a GameStop. You can do whatever you want with them after you buy them. And uh, region locks have been dropped on the system, so it is region-free now, which words. is... I think one of the best things that they said. It is a PS4 with a Microsoft logo. It's just, it's such a weird thing. All the stuff, it seems like all the stuff was somehow must have been tied together because if if all they wanted to do was make it offline, they could have just done that and a couple other things, but they also made it region free and there was a couple other things in there. See, I'm like, well, why did you... Because the thing is, Brian, that it's, it's too, it's, it's not like flipping a switch. You can't just flip a switch on all the DRM off. But they just flipped a switch. <laughs> and it was off. Oh. Yeah. You forgot about that. Part. Uh, it's, it's, oh, oh flipped, okay. They, they okay, did flip hang the on, switch hang on, hang on, hang on. So, just to show the confusion amongst gamers, our friend of the show, Jared, just texted me saying, rumor, Xbox One may become the Xbox 180. <laughs> What? <laughs> Microsoft, do you even PR? <laughs> can we can we officially start calling it that? Is that uh, the new? I, I the new think, no, the original one's the 180. No, the original one is the Xbox One. This is the Xbox no, 180. No, everyone calls the Xbox the 180, the original one. So you can't do that. It has to be something else. That is a, but it, it's a 720 yep. then. Yeah, it's got to be, right? Just double it every time. Take that and then double it. <laughs> Take that and just spin it around until you're right back to where you started again. No, that's a, that's a song. Oh. You got to get it right back to where you started right, from. Right, yeah. No. So what? what is... <sighs> anyway. Nope. I, yeah. <laughs> Before we overcomplicate this, this came with a kind of kind of a uh, a downside as well because people were clamoring for this. They're just like, do it, and it'll be better. 
but a lot of the features that people were looking forward to that included the DRM was the uh, game sharing between family members and friends and all of the stuff that included online between games and all that kind of stuff. So most of the online components, multiplayer and stuff, is all there still, so it's still like a normal gaming system, but you will not be able to share your digital or physical games with your friends. And if you install your game to your hard drive, you have to have your disc in, just like you do on a 360. So this is what doesn't make sense to me with that, is they were showing the whole Snap thing, and they were saying, you know, any game... You install them direct. You install them fully, so you don't need the discs. So then, all of your games are on your hard drive, no matter how you bought them. So you can just snap between games, and between TV, and between Netflix, and between apps, and whatever. And now that only works for downloaded stuff. So well, now it worked for disc games. That the disc games still install. They just have to have the disc for. But you would only have that one disc game. Like all your disc games. Like say you're a person who bought all your games and discs. You can still oh, use it for everything. But if you want to do this with more than just your disc that's in the drive and you have and you buy other stuff on disc, you can't. It only works for that one that's in your drive. As far as I know. I mean maybe it hopefully it works for that one. Hopefully they can do like a suspend and just go to a different thing and then go back to it. I'm assuming, but that would be the benefit of buying things digital now because you can't do that unless you just want the one game that's in your drive to do that functionality, which kind of makes their whole system, the the, the whole ecosystem they wanted to have uh, not work unless you buy it all digital. I feel like that they were trying to launch a, a game system from the next next generation, this generation, and that was the problem. <laughs> The next next generation. The next the next next generation. Generation nine, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was it, it was really too early for them to try me, to do something like this. Let me put it no. to you this way. I'm I'm gonna describe a console and you tell me what console I'm talking about. And whenever you figure it out, you tell me which console it is, okay? It comes in white, uh, it has an online network, and it has a network networking built into it. Um, you can actually have a second screen on the controller itself. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, Wii U? No. Oh, no. it's so close to the Wii U. It's the Dreamcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. Hey, oh, what happened to that? That that was, system was great. It was. Oh wait. Where's Sega now? Oh. Oh. Well, it's they're having exclusive games on the Nintendo system. Oh. Yep. Because Sonic has nowhere else to live. Right. <laughs> The house that Sonic built is no longer a thing. Nope. <laughs> so it got foreclosed on. <laughs> well, so Granted, we're talking about. It's not a perfect analogy because there were plenty of other things that uh, helped the downfall of the Dreamcast, like the piracy issues and the fact that the best-selling game system of all time launched a year after it. Um, but my point just is that Sega was living in Tomorrowland and. I feel like they put a stronger emphasis on what was happening right then, like maybe putting a DVD player in it to compete yes. with the PS2 or and the, not a network card um, and focusing on maybe partnering with, I don't know, there's this game publisher that kind of makes or breaks publishers. What? Uh, oh, EA Sports. Um, that might have helped, you know, propel the Dreamcast further. There might still be Sega consoles today. You no, know, I was I was heard that the people like the Dreamcast sports games though. They were good. That's fine. But people, you got to think about the EA Sports demographic. That like it's most of the people who play the EA sports. They're not like regular gamers because most of the sports guys aren't people who play Final Fantasies and the more common larger gaming titles. They buy the franchises that they know and love. And they buy EA Sports games because they know they love EA Sports games. They're not going to go like, oh, this sports game's better for these. I don't care. I buy EA Sports games. So if there's not an option there of them being able to like get their EA Sports game and then realize later that the 2K Sports games or the Sega Sports games are better, then they're not going to... They're going to say, well, EA Sports coming to the PS2. PS2 comes out in six months and it's got a DVD player. <laughs> Forget that thing. That's... that's I mean, this sounds very it sounds eerily familiar to some other white console that doesn't have EA sports games on it. <laughs> That's that not doing so well guess. right now. Hmm. Is that the first one that you guess? Is that the Wii U? I think yeah. that might be it. That's yeah. that's, that's what it ding, was. Ding 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 ding. We'll uh, we'll see. 
You know, the, <laughs> so, the thing is, though, the Sega had like three franchises that they can lean back on, and they weren't very sturdy. <laughs> At least Nintendo has their franchises that they've shown in the GameCube era can carry the platform all by itself. Um, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's EA Sports is definitely very important to a, a franchise and or a uh, a platform. And the fact that EA is <sighs> Nintendo, man. Yep. They sell yep. that hardware. Well. So the the other thing we we sort of skimmed over here with that was removed that was upset me was well supposedly removed with the uh, Xbox One this week was the uh, family sharing which was supposed to be from everything that was written on the Xbox site hey you can share all your games with ten people family or not just people that you knew and you could have them on a list and you could all share them and one person be playing it and you could be playing it at a time and then if you were if they were in your share no one else could be in your share until they were done that would have been cool i thought um i would just be able to let my friends who didn't have a game i had play with me and or they could just try a game when i was done or whatever like instead of a disc i don't have to drive to their house drop it off or mail it to them or whatever they can just like open their Share. Hey, there it is. Yeah. But apparently, <clears throat> well, the, well, rumors. Sorry. Was it just was really fast? Just to add to that, at face value, that feature sounds phenomenal. Like, there's really no, there's, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to have that on your console, right? Right. I mean, it just sounds, sounds great. It's, it's. But once you start questioning it, and you start asking, like, oh, but what, what are the real, what are the details behind this? What am I? What am I gaining and, and losing here, or what what are you really what what's what's really happening behind the scenes when I utilize this feature? Because none of us have used this yet. The system hasn't launched. This is all the right. system just got announced. So the details, I mean, they could change by the time the system. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, anyways, go go. <laughs> so uh, the joke flew right over you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I I hear you. <laughs> But that was what was supposedly going to happen. That was what was said a lot of places on the internet and by official people. So, uh, but not, I mean, yes, it was said by people, but then also it was not really clear 100%. And then they took it away. Well, and they, But did they really take it away? I don't know. What about that so, article that you, you found from the guy? That so, it's, it's not, I mean, reliability on this is, or credibility is hit or miss. But still interesting okay. nonetheless. So the so someone posted on Pastebin, which is just this kind of uh, Reddit type site that you know anonymously, hey, I work at Microsoft, and here's what the plan was. The plan, uh, well, again, grain of salt, but this is what they said was that it was going to be 15 to 45 minute demos of your games, not the entire game. So you couldn't like just borrow it and just play it through the entire thing it would be like what steam is supposedly gonna do except for not demos but they would say hey you know after 45 minutes so if you want to buy it go to the uh site which is or go to this store which is kind of what sony does right now with all their games on ps3 which is not sharing it's demoing right and if that was going to be the case well then i don't miss it (laughs) <laughs> if yeah. that was going to be it. I mean, if that was going to be the case, then obviously I want to be able to have my discs to share with people because that was that's the only way to share. See, that's, if, yeah. that, that was my initial fear of like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the features they kept us like boasting sounded great outside of the, the things that the internet didn't like. But it's the context. Like, no one's tried it yet. No one's field tested it. No one knows the... You know, no one's read the the terms of conditions of any of these features. So, you know, again, at face value, sounds awesome. But what if there's more to it than that? Like, what if what you said before that it's just 45-minute demos? Then it's like, well, <clears throat> now I've got always online DRM. I can't get rid of my games, and I'm technically not allowed to share my games. And we don't know if that was true or not. You know, that can, that's super super rumor um but i just yep <sighs> microsoft man <clears throat> why can't you just come out and just sell the console why can't you just come out like sony well, and just be like look here's our plan this is what we're doing we're not doing this 
we're not doing this. You got to pay for online gaming now, and we're not doing this, and we're not doing this. Bam! <laughs> oh man, that is aw- Wait, it's huh. that's. Wait, what did he just say? There was something said, in there that I didn't agree P- with. He said this is a PS3 with better graphics, and now you have to pay for online. Just, oh, that that's not better. <laughs> It's better one than one that Microsoft, supposed Microsoft employee, said about it. Yeah, he said so that no. he said that the PS4 was Xbox 360 Part Two. Well, now you know. Now the one is Xbox 360 Part Two. There you go. The PS4 is the PS3 Part Two. Well, I mean, in, in all fairness, consoles at for this point have been just that. You know, the PS2, or PS3 was just the PS2 Part Two. You know, it's just the thing is like. And you, you go back with each console, but you really start to break it down. And if if pushing the industry forward is going full digital on a console, or starting something like the Family Share, or just really revolutionizing the way that we play games, then we're really <clears throat> overlooking some of the biggest innovations in the past. That you know, something like the original Xbox launched Xbox Live. You know, that completely changed the way that we play games, uh, but it didn't like take anything else away when it did it it just kind of like eased us into it and then it wasn't really that big of a deal in the xbox original era it was and then once it kind of springboarded onto the 360 then it became like dude this is a thing that everybody has to do now like granted pc has been doing it for years and decades but it's like just all the consoles need to be doing this right now and then all the sony fans got stood up and said why are you not doing this? And Sony was like, whoa, 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 we just introduced a network adapter. <laughs> we are still <laughs> trying to figure out this internet thing. You need to our, calm down. Our people play stuff in person. They play stuff in cafes. <laughs> they don't play stuff online. Right. That's in Japan. Yes. <laughs> but now they do, I guess, a little more. So, I mean, this whole generation ushered in digital content. I mean, Sony went from being the company that was like, whoa, whoa no thank you hands, we are not ready for internet stuffs yet, to being the company that is pioneering day one digital for disc-based games, launching them simultaneously when the disc-based game comes out, and in some cases, you know, a few hours before the disc-based game comes out. So it's and it, that would not have been the case if it wasn't for Microsoft pushing them, doing that with Xbox Live. So this whole last generation has really, really pushed the entire industry in a completely different direction than what it's been for the last three generations. You bought a Super Nintendo, what did you do? You went down to Toys R Us and you bought a game and you put it in the system. You bought an N64, what did you do? You went down to Toys R Us, you bought a game, you put it in your system. You bought a GameCube, what do you do? You went down to Toys R Us, you bought a game, you put it in your system. I mean, it's been the same thing. Yeah, and those those games didn't have DRM. Oh, wait, the cartridge was DRM. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's your DR. <laughs> but that's the thing is like it's there hasn't been the, the leap forward that we've had in the way that we play games and the way that we handle the distribution of games like it was in this current generation. And that moving forward, because we're not getting the family share and all of these uh, advanced futuristic features that Microsoft was boasting out of the gate on the Xbox One, that doesn't mean that we're stuck in a loop. If we're stuck in the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era for another two generations but we evolve it forward every generation it's not a bad thing for gaming it's just going to progressively get better just like it did for the last four or five generations but i don't see that happening i see that as the next the generation after the with the ninth generation most likely going to be online only yeah i think so i mean this is think about it sorry go ahead chris i was just going to say this is a perfect opportunity for them to Microsoft to take a step back and if they want to implement these features because as they were saying this is the future of gaming so we were just trying to get you prepared for it you need to do it a little bit better like Ryan said we wouldn't have the PlayStation Network the way it is right now without Xbox Live when the Xbox 360 was announced they said it had broadband internet only and people freaked out about it because broadband wasn't a prominent thing back in 2006 yeah. It sounds weird today. But well, a... the Xbox 360 did that too. Yeah. This, this is the thing is like there are there are yeah. other subtle things that they didn't change that are still pushing it, but that are kind of like a standard to the average person now that is still isolating somebody. Like for instance, yeah. both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One only have an HDMI. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. you have an yeah. older TV, or you don't have another HDMI input, 
you don't need a new system, I guess. Which, and again, in 2006, if those systems were to only come out with HDMI ports, I don't even think the 360 launched with an HDMI port. Nope. It, um, but it no, not. I don't think it did. Yeah, so, I mean, if you, they were to launch back then when HD TVs were just starting to come around and people were just starting to hop on board with them, people would have freaked out the same way they did with all this online business, this generation yeah. that was being announced. So this is the perfect opportunity for Microsoft to take a step back, <laughs> represent their case, and evolve it in this generation, push the envelope in this generation slowly to get people accustomed to it, and they will latch on. They will adopt. Well, here here's the thing with that. I think that they think I think that they have been slowly pushing digital already, and they just haven't pushed it hard enough with stuff like sales, like you can see with things like Steam where, mm-hmm. hey, it's cheaper to buy it now because it's digital. If you want a disc, you can buy a disc and it's you know full price. Or you can buy digital and you get a discount or you get a perk or whatever. And they haven't been doing that. If they'd been doing that for a while, I think people would have latched on a lot quicker. Yeah, um, it was total the, night and day on that. And the problem with starting a generation and then change, you can't change it mid stream in a generation. They haven't even put out the box yet, so they can, okay, so they're going to change how this the entire OS works. Well, it's not out yet, so whatever, but once they start putting it out, all the disks are made a certain way. They're not going to have those codes on them, so they can't just, in the middle of that, go, okay, now these disks are DRM disks, and they have a special sticker on them that says DRM, and from now on, you need to check and make sure to, they're going to do that. Yeah. Which isn't so, the way it should have been anyway. Like Physical media shouldn't have been a part of this from the first place. It should have been all digital side of things. If that that's what they're going to do, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. if you want to if you want to do mid-cycle switch-o, change-o on the user, and you want to know how that's going to work out for you, you should ask Sony to see how the PSP Go worked out. Granted, I loved my PSP Go, and I am absolutely ready to adopt a fully digital future because I honestly do think it's a future. And you also got to think about it in the context of the PSP Go is a portable gaming system. It's going up against other portable gaming systems and portable units. The iPad doesn't have cartridges. Android phones don't have cartridges. The uh, Windows tablets, like the Surface right. or the Windows phone, they don't have cartridges. So right. it was only obvious for Sony to put out a portable system that doesn't use cartridges because that's where the industry is headed. Eventually, all portable systems will not have cartridges. So Sony was like, this is the future. We're forward thinking. We're going to make a smaller system. It's the size of an iPod Touch. It's got 16 gigs on board, just like an iPod Touch. It's priced competitively with an iPod Touch, and it plays all the PSP games. There's no reason that this should... Oh. Here, here's the thing, though, with that. Not that many people had had those compared to consoles in the home. When one of the major console makers says, this is how it's going to be, a lot more people are going to just say, okay. Well, the and thing was, is like, is. Th- like there was no uproar in the middle of the life cycle because there was an alternative. So... Sony put out the Go, and they're like, this is the future of PSP and what we're going to do in the future of gaming systems. And then everybody who came in to buy one was just like, that's pretty neat, but I'll, uh, I'll take one on the 3000 series. Well, also, everyone was hacking those 3000 series and playing free games on them, so that's <laughs> Yeah, that's I mean... That's all people were using them for anyway, so why would they buy something you couldn't hack? True, and the other thing, too, I mean, we, could, we talk about, like, you know, like, the 3DS, like, I've gone 100% full digital with my 3DS. I don't... Even I have, and I'm, like, super box guru when it comes to my games. I like having a physical copy of the stuff that I buy, and Ryan convinced me to switch over. Because it just makes sense, especially on a portable system. You don't carry a box full of cartridges in your pocket to play Angry Birds on your iPhone. It just, just does not fit the average life. <laughs> you well, I've been doing it wrong. Oh, man, Brian, you got to get on the digital age. It but, makes perfect sense for a handheld system, like Ryan said. For a console, I don't think I'm ready to adopt quite yet. And see, the thing, I, I am ready for that. Like, I have tons of digital games on my PlayStation 3, and I'm ready to adopt the digital age. And if if Sony had come out and just said, you know what, screw discs, digital only, you know, I mean, it would have been kind of the same reaction, I would would have assumed. But my my personal personal opinion, I, it wouldn't have affected me as much because I'm ready to embrace it just as much as Brian is as well. That we, we know that is the future. But in terms of the industry, as Chris keeps saying, I, I don't think the industry is ready for this yet. 
I don't think we've gotten to the point where there is a large enough margin of gamers who are ready to just say, you know what, I don't need my physical copy anymore. I don't need to buy my games from GameStop anymore. And like you said, Brian, if if Microsoft had been competitive with like Steam's type of sales, then there wouldn't be that drive to want to buy a used copy of Call of Duty because they know on the the Xbox Live Summer Sale that you know my, the Call of Duty is only going to be like ten bucks. So whatever, I'll just wait for the live summer sale to scoop up all my games for super cheap. Yeah, but then you know they haven't been doing that, and I I've been lampooning Sony for that for a while too. But you have to give them some credit that Sony has come around a bit on sales, and they have been dropping the prices on a lot of stuff to either match what's happening at retail with those games, or even to go a step further. And especially with PlayStation Plus, you know, with PlayStation Plus, the prices on some of these games are reaching Steam territory because they'll put a game on sale, a decent price, a twenty dollar game on sale for. 10 bucks. It's half off for anybody to buy. And then if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, it's like five bucks. So now a $20 game is five bucks. That's a Steam sale. Yeah. Granted, you have uh, to be a subscriber to PlayStation Plus, but still. Yeah, but if you do it enough, it just pays for itself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. That's what they needed to do. And if, I mean, it needs to be even more extreme than that, kind of more like Steam, I think, in order for people to really say, whatever man i'm just gonna go digital i don't care that's fine um but if they were gonna have but they didn't they didn't outline any of that and the reason being is that they're a business and they want to make money and why would they say hey we're gonna have all these really cheap games and blah 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 and i just don't think that's something they would say at a3 so and who knows what their plans were in the future i feel like they could have at least gotten away with uh like Sony typically launches the day one digital games are usually five dollars cheaper than the retail release, and you don't pay tax on that. Um, so if you buy okay. the digital card, you don't pay tax on the sh- card. Are you sure? Because I think I do. It depends on your state. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, us in California, we don't pay tax on it yet. It's actually, I think, being decided upon later this year. Um, Because we recently, up until recently, didn't have to pay tax on Amazon here in California, and now we do. Well, in in any case, right now in California, you don't pay tax. That works out to be about $10 off. Um, Right. If you pay tax, it's still $5 off. So um, I feel like Microsoft could have came out and said, okay, look, here's the deal. You can still buy disc games just the way you normally would, just the way you do on Xbox 360. But we feel like the future of gaming is in a digital space. We want you to use the most advanced features on the Xbox One, like the Snap feature, which only works with downloadable games. We're going to incentivize that future by offering all digital games, day one digital disc games, for $10 cheaper than the retail version. So if you're going to go buy Call of Duty at retail and it's 60 bucks, the day it comes out, it's $10 cheaper on Xbox Live. Like I feel like if they they announced that like that, that would have gotten a reaction. I feel like that, that yeah. would have gotten applause. Mm-hmm. People would have yeah, gotten excited. I, I, I agree. But I do also think that they put all this time and effort into making this system that they want everybody to use for everything, and they want that to be their thing. So they don't want to say, well, it only works on if you do it this way. It only works for these games that you <clears throat> that you buy digitally, not the ones you buy in the stores. Because then that's, that uh, really screws it, screwed with the retailer partners and all that, saying, hey, the ones in the stores are worse. You should I, not buy the ones in the stores. I guess my, my only rebuttal to something like that is I sympathize with Microsoft because I have the same problem. I, too, would like to have everything unified and just make it nice and easy so it's all the same. So I'd love to be able to just play Halo on my PlayStation or The Last of Us on my Xbox. But the reality is the world that we live in it's not going to happen. And it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you know, it, it would be nice if it was all unified. It's all, all online and everyone's just going to adopt it and just be happy about it. But that's that's just not the reality of the industry right now. And it's, it's unfortunate because, you know, it, it is where we will eventually head head to and end up. Undoubtedly, we will eventually head, head to that. Maybe even the next generation... In Generation 9, there might still be discs, but discs will be like digital games in Generation 7, 
where discs are like just kind of still there for the publishers who want to put discs out, but 90% of all the developers are doing all digital only now. I mean, I could see that as well. But there needs to be like that evolution because that's a huge step. You got to think about that. Since the inception of home video game consoles, there has always been a cartridge or a disc or something physical that you buy at the store and you put in your system. This is a huge, huge step, and we're trying to make that leap in a generation and a half. No, a half a generation, technically. Like, we went a half a generation of digital distribution where it's really kind of ramped up and became a popular thing, and then now, moving into the next generation, Microsoft wants to go, all right, here we go. Well, the problem was that they didn't go all the way. They did. They went halfway, and then they made it really confusing. Yeah. So they were saying, well, we want it to be like this, but we're not saying we want it like this. We're just saying, here, you can sort of do what you're doing before, but it's different. Or you could just do all digital, but they didn't really promote that. Uh, they just said, your discs can work like this. Here's a question. If Microsoft came out and said, here's the Xbox One. There is no disk drive. There are no disks. Everything is digital distribution with the cloud, seamless integration, family share, all that stuff. What do you think that the reaction to that would have been? Do you think there still would have been backlash? Do you think people would still have been pissed off? Because technically the system would still have all of the online uh, DRM check-in and all that. And it yeah. would still have everything else. But but it wouldn't be confusing. It would be straight up. It just There's no like ifs, ands, or buts. It's there are no disks. Everything is distribution through Microsoft. I would, yeah, I think people would be upset because they would think that, well, Microsoft's then the monopoly and they'll just set the prices to whatever and I can't buy them for five bucks in the used bin. That and then I feel like their third parties wouldn't support a system like that because retail is still a huge presence these days. Yeah. So it would be a bold thing on Microsoft's part to just be like, this is what we're doing. You guys can deal with it. We're going all digital because that's the future of gaming, but I still think it's way too early. I feel like that Sony was banking on or planning on having an all digital only portable system for the Vita, but be based on what happened with the Go, we got cartridges. That's probably what the test was for. <laughs> because... Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, why do you need to? I mean, for the size of the PS Vita games are, why wouldn't you just do all digital? Even the person with the most, the smallest internet can still download a Vita game. Well, the Vita games get to be pretty big, actually. Like, for instance, I was trying to download Blaze Blue because Blaze Blue is free for the Plus, and it is actually three and a half gigs. I mean, uh, yeah, three and a half gigs, but it's not 30 gigs. No, that's I mean, true. It's not a Blu-ray. I mean, it, if you have any internet at all, three gigs is nothing. True. I mean, you know, the 3DS is kind of a, a better example of that. I could... I could see Nintendo getting away with that a little bit more just because their games are usually no bigger than about a gig or two, like unless they port it from the Wii, like Donkey Kong, which is like three gigs. But on average, they're usually about a gig or so. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, Xbox One revoking all of its... So, yeah, so then yesterday, so yesterday it was basically, hey, yeah, so we're... We're hey. like the PS4 exactly now. We're Our bad. We have different. We have different games, but we're the exactly like the PS4. I honestly wasn't expecting them to come out and correct anything at all. Like I, I expected no. them to hold to their guns and just be like, "We're doing it. We're gonna go to retail at launch, and then after launch, when if people stuck to their guns and we're just like, we're not buying it. Yeah, if that's the case. And then after launch, they're just like, people are not buying this thing. We got to do something. And I yeah. honestly expected the next year to just be like, "Hey, we're." Lightening up on the, some of these online policies. Could you, could you imagine oh. the PR catastrophe, though, in the holiday season, if that was the case? Yeah. PlayStation oh, 4 sells out at all retailers. PlayStation 4 is this. PlayStation 4 sells a record selling 40 million units. PlayStation 4 sells. Microsoft saw that oh. and they don't want that. So, yeah, I mean, I also thought that they were just going to stick it out and just see how it happened. And I and I liked that because I thought at least it was a little, it was ballsy and was pioneering. And at least maybe they would stick to their guns and just see what happened. Maybe it would work. Maybe people would just back off and be like, oh, nerd rage, nerd rage. Well, I'm going to get one anyway. Yeah. You know, and then 
but no, now it's, uh, well, it's, hey, look at this generation, just like the last generation, and for the next 10 years. But see, the thing is, like, that all that stuff is software. It's all completely software, and we know this because it needs a day one patch to take yep. all that crap back out again. So there's two variables. One is a bit tinfoil hat territory, and the other one is probably more likely. And the tinfoil hat territory one is that at any given time, Microsoft can reinstate all of these features whenever they want. So two years down the road, when everyone buys an Xbox One now, they're just like, so remember those features? Yeah, those are a thing now. And there's a terms and conditions that you have to accept yeah. when you log in. Yeah, and like, there's nothing you can you do about it. They're not going to do that. I, I know, out, I know, I know. If people flipped out on this, can you imagine I the backlash? I preface this with saying it's tinfoil hat territory. <laughs> they won't. And the, but, the problem with the, like you were saying, the messaging, people don't realize the reason for the DRM at all. They think that Microsoft was just trying to screw them. And the reason for the DM, DRM was they were going to have you install fully every disk and not have to swap your disks. And everything was on your system and everything was in the cloud and you didn't have to have carry on all your disks well, with you the, or whatever. And see, now that, that's, it was the execution that. of that, though. Like, it, was, it was the problem was is that it wasn't necessarily that. Uh, okay, so how do I. How there's do I no other this? way for you to do that unless you have. But there is. There's one, the, there's one other way of doing this really quick. You have to have the disk in the drive. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the other way of doing it is because they said the system has to check in every 24 hours. So it not check in every 24 hours because that puts a arbitrary time frame on just checking in in general. But rather, the system needs to check in when you go to play a certain game that you've shared. So, like, you've shared this game, you've it got to paint the server. It shared it. We, it'll know you shared it because you were online in order to share it. So, like, it has to be online for online-enabled features. What but if your friend... So if, you have to be online when your friend was online at the same time? No, no, no. You have to be online when to receive the game. And then when you want yep. to play that game, you have to be online to play that game because you are sharing that game from an online friend. But when you go to the store and you buy a disc-based game that's single-player only and you put that game in your system, you don't need any online. So, like, there was that avenue. You could have gone down that road of, like, there. I mean, the online is there, but it's only there when it makes sense. But having it always pinging the server every 24 hours, even when you're playing Skyrim, that's where people were like, what the no, F, I, Microsoft? I think you're you're missing out on. I've done the math on this a lot, and I every single time I did it, it came out to yeah. If you if you do the diagram here, the only way to do it is to have it check because a person could borrow your game and then go offline, and then you could go and play your game, and they could play it too because it doesn't know that it needs to revoke the license, etc. Well, see, it's just yeah. Not just well. There's a there's a feature built into the PS3 on like the uh, the game trials. So you can download a game trial from the PS3. You have an hour to play it, and then it expires. And it doesn't matter if you check in or not. The system's offline. The game just expires. The OS says you cannot play this game anymore because it has expired. So you could implement something in the OS that says, you know, you've borrowed this game for two days unless you check in online and if you don't check in online then the game just expires and you can't play it so that would be pretty much the same thing it would be for the online games for the games that you shared online but it wouldn't be for the games that you bought on just the disc games. yeah which which would have been perfect i think people wouldn't have have really no. freaked out well because if okay so if you install the disc in your system mm -hmm. and then it's on your system you don't ever need the disc again ever then you go offline and then you give it to someone else and they log in and it says okay grab my license okay well i'm not online because my system's not always well, online well, obviously on. so then it would grab that license I, I, I i'm following you but you're you're uh you went a different different avenue than what I'm, i was saying i'm just talking about just disc games yes yeah so the disc games if you install it it becomes a digital game because you no longer need the disc. So it's just the same right. as if you bought it on live and downloaded it to your hard drive. You just bought it at a store and installed it to your hard drive. So that game now has the same online restrictions because you installed it. However, if you don't install it and you just run it off the disc, you're not required to check in. And they, this, that, that is how they could have gotten around it. So then that way people who are just like, I don't care, 
I just want to play offline and I just want to play my Assassin's Creed games and then just just be it and my Maddens. And they could have said, well, you can totally do that. If you want to do that, if you just want to go to GameStop and buy used copies of Madden and play it offline, go for it. You can't use Snap. You can't use the Family Share. You can't use any of these great features that we're trying to sell you because it requires an internet connection in order for these features to work. But you're more than welcome to do that if that's the way you want to use the Xbox. But everybody else is going to use these features because it makes sense and it's awesome. And I don't think anybody would have like had a problem with that then, because then the people who have a problem with that have no argument. Here, I, here's what, where I was going with it was, say you installed it, and then okay, it's in your online share, whatever, and then you go offline, you give the disc to somebody else, and they go, or I'm sorry, you go offline, and then the person, the friend of yours goes and oh hey, there's your share online. You never go back online. Your friend goes online. They look at your share. They get to play your games in your share. So they're playing that game that you have on disc, but yet you still have the game on the disc, and you're offline, and you can play the disc too. So both of you are playing the same game at the same time. Because he's playing your online version, and you're playing the disc version, but it's two games in the same, one game in two different places at the same time. But it would still he's be playing, the, it'd still be a digital version, version, no matter what. Because if you're playing the disc version, the disc version is not installed, and the disc version wouldn't show up in your game share program because you didn't install it. You, what you're saying is, if you want to be able to play it at all, it needs to not be in your share. Yeah, you can't. If, if you, you want to play it on the disc, but there's no way for it to check to see if it's in your share if you're not online. But that's the thing is, like, it would never upload to your profile because you've never hit the server to upload to your profile that you bought that game. Because it's I just want to let space. everybody know that I'm lost. <laughs> like, season seven of the show just started right now <laughs> on our podcast. I, I think that you're thinking of the... Uh, this is all theoretical. You know, yeah, this, this yeah. is all confusing. But, but like, say... <laughs> say you're, you're thinking of the disc as like a self-destruct. No, 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 no. Well, yeah. I guess in a way, if you're installing the disc, then yes. Because the disc is a... It's not a thinking thing. It doesn't know if it's installed to the cloud or not. It's it just a disc. But it, it can have a serial number on it, just like a PC game. So, and that's what they were but proposing. But it doesn't, though. Well, they were proposing no, they were, that. Because then it was like a built-in thing, not a code. But the thing is, is that like when you go to use that, it, it would have to authenticate that disc. And then you have to wipe the authentication off that disc in order to sell it back to GameStop. So, so you still, you still have to check in online at some point, which is, fu- which is fine. Which is yeah. fine. Which is fine. Like you know, you can yeah. you can. I I don't I don't mind yeah. them forcing you to check in online okay. once. So, so what you're saying is okay if there was the one time check every time you put the disc in the drive, and then it checked to see if it was in your share, and if it wasn't in your share, you could play it offline. And then you go back offline, or you just don't go online at all, and it never goes into your share. So then it's just stuck on your console, that one console? Lost. Well, that's the way it is now. Season 7. No, because you can put a disc in any in any console and play it. Yeah, I think we could debate this all night, but it's just going in circles. Anyway, so, so I think we should move on. Happening, and uh, yeah. it's, it's going to be like 60 yeah. and the PS3 and the PS4. See, this is this is what we were talking about earlier about how confusing this is. It's it's incredibly how, confusing. How uh, all, confusing the situation. All, in in conclusion, all I was proposing was is basically what I was proposing is how the 360 works right now. Like you you put a disc in, you play it, and then if you don't want to play it anymore, you give it to a friend, and that the online share features are only there for games that you have installed on your hard drive. Otherwise, yeah. if it's a disc, it's a three. So basically, just make everything optional. Oh, That's only, what you're saying. Not everything. Just just make the disc install optional. Because if you make the disc install optional, that game never goes into your game share, and it never has to be in the server because no one can borrow that game now because it's not in your game share because mm-hmm. because it's only on the disc. As you can see, I don't know. lost. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> really? That. <laughs> I got lost halfway through the thing. I just stopped paying attention because oh, I was trying to trying to get back. And, and I just whatever. It's is all theoretical. Yeah. Microsoft. Anyway, what are you? Xbox doing? One. No longer online required and all that business. So. Yeah. Xbox One is Xbox 360 with better graphics and a bigger friends list. Is that really a bad thing though? And Skype. Because I feel like you're selling it as a bad thing. Like I said, like I said, 
it's, it's not it's not any it's not a change it's like you just kind of after like eight years you, you kind of just want something a little different but did you say that about the xbox original xbox well i didn't xbox... have that oh. <laughs> yeah i did i didn't start getting back into gaming i went from like n64 to a little bit of gamecube and then i jumped to 360 and we i don't know i think that people getting upset that this is like a back step for the thing, they still have the opportunity to release these features and evolve the generation. They're just not doing it in a way that freaks everybody out and all at one time. Yeah, I mean, slowly progress. That's an angle. People that will adopt it. We didn't even discuss is that like that family sure thing could come back at any time. They even said it. They didn't like officially confirm it, but one of the guys was just like, at this time, these features will not be in at launch, which hinted at the fact that. They could implement it. It could later. implement it later. So d- don't necessarily count them as canceled, but don't necessarily think that they might come back. I it feel like they're canceled. So I feel like going back to the uh, – and saying, well, we're going to keep the used games and keep the lending games that the devs don't want. Oh, and on top of that, they're gonna the devs are going to let you share games digitally. Nah, I don't see that happening. I think that nope. it was either one or the other. We'll see. How, we'll we'll have to just see. Time will tell in this situation. Right now, it is not even a week after E3 yet, and it's just too early. The systems aren't going to be out for another six months. So who knows? Microsoft we'll next week out. might come out and say we're putting DRM back in it. There you go. They might there say next week. Who know? Who knows what they'll say? They could say anything. Maybe I don't next know week, what they'll say now. Sony will come out and be like, "Hey, since Microsoft's not doing that, we're going to do it." And then I'm not getting a PS4. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about the extra, the difference in pricing that people are complaining about now because Between of the Kinect. The well, it's still, it's still a hundred dollars more because it has Kinect, and I don't want Kinect. Well, PS3 was two hundred dollars more, and it because it had Blu-ray, and some people didn't want Blu-ray, but they still bought it. Well, kind, <laughs> kind of. I mean, in all fairness, not very many people bought PS3s in the first two years. Except for the people who bought them on eBay for a thousand dollars, like yeah, that's happens this. every generation, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the last little bit of business here. Oh, so the, like everybody is so funny because everybody after E3. All they were talking about was the Microsoft confusion and how Sony just took it. They were just like, man. Sony dropped the mic. They were like, we're not doing DRM. We're not doing this. Microsoft can suck it. We're Sony. Peace, we out. And everyone's just like, Sony is so great. I think that is a historically accurate quote from their press conference. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty sure. And then then it just dawned on me the other day, and I was just like, wait a second. Hold on. In all fairness of accountability – where the hell were the Vita games? <laughs> is this a system that you guys are still supporting? Like, is this thing just dead now? Like, we're not, just are we supposed to trade these in and be like, oh, we're not making portable games anymore. Sorry, guys, just PS4. What happened? The world I don't know. You never know. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Because I'm honestly trying to remember back, and there's so much going on that I can't remember them talking about the Vita. At all. They, it was like right at the beginning. They said, "Hey, we're like we like the Vita. It's should... good." And then no games. Yeah, I honestly think that they're banking on the Vita to be more of a second screen for the PS4 at this point than it is to be a um, piece of hardware that is actually for gaming in and of itself. Which is a shame because it is a great piece of hardware. And it is not great at doing remote play on the PS3 at the moment. <laughs> so we'll have to see how that works out for the PS4. Oh, yeah. So, and, oh man. I mean, this is, this is just as catastrophic as the Microsoft DRM thing. Like, why isn't everybody talking about this? Why are we not jumping down Ryan, Sony's cares. throat right now? No, nobody's cared about the Vita since it launched. And now you just have another excuse not to care. No one's going to jump down Sony's throat right now because... They are the saviors. Because the Microsoft fanboys were pissed off at Microsoft, and Sony would use any. And Sony fanboys will take any chance to bitch about Microsoft, even though they're not going to buy the system anyway. So everybody's bitching about Microsoft. Now that uh, Microsoft went back, well, you know, status quo. So I don't know. I just, I just don't even, man. 
Like, maybe maybe they'll have some stuff at Gamescom uh, or a press specific event for the Vita. Because really, this E3 was about the next generation. I feel like this so, E3 was about just pointing and laughing at Microsoft. Like I said, the next generation. <laughs> just, just, that's that's all I got out of E3, and like it's unfortunate too. It's like not not anything that I'm like getting my rocks off, laughing at Microsoft's you know misfortune or anything like that. But it just feels like that's all E3 was. Like I've been thinking back about like what got announced, what happened. You know, E3 was four days of just crazy announcements and stuff, and all I can think back is every news media outlet. Uh, even even publishers and console publishers pointing yeah. and laughing at Microsoft. Nobody's even talking about games, really. They're just talking about Microsoft. Just pointing and laughing, and it's and like, you know, Microsoft. Any news is good, or uh, any news about them is good news, I guess. Or I get, how do you say that? Yeah. Any press is good press. I any guess. press is good press. So maybe yeah. they're like, hey, well, we can snip this in the bud real think, quick, and I then think, no one honestly, will we it. just got our first exception to the rule. Yeah, <laughs> because no. I mean, but, it's but, and it's partially Microsoft's fault for the way that they handled describing it because maybe if they came out and sold the system in a different way that we might have had a different reaction to it but even still it's like there's got to be other accountability it's like why are we talking about the division like we just spent i don't know hour and some odd minutes talking about all the stuff that's happened this week and microsoft stuff we didn't even mention the division i guess we did earlier but, you mentioned it in last week's podcast, but yes, the division is going to be a fantastic game. You know, like yeah. the, the Ubisoft just you, you want to talk about drop the mic. Ubisoft literally dropped the mic last year, and they literally dropped the mic this year. And they did before do, Sony's press conference. I honestly thought that they were taking E3 again this and year. Honestly, I I mean it, it's not a race. Nobody wins or loses. We've we've tried to establish this. Everyone keeps trying to establish this, but it it's not a thing. The internet still establishes a win win or loss ratio when it comes to E3 unfortunately but even though Sony came out and just basically rode the wake of chaos that Microsoft was creating and just kind of like smile at the top of the wave I still feel like Ubisoft took it because I was more blown away by what they had to show than the fact of Sony coming out and saying we're not doing anything <laughs> We're not doing anything to you. Everything's gonna stay the same. Don't worry. <laughs> it's like you and know, everyone just went we. And no, that's but... what, and that's what I want right now out of a console, which is fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing by any means, but that's not exciting. What's exciting <sighs> is right. the division. What's exciting well, is the crew. What's exciting is everything Ubisoft showed. Oh man, watch that. They need it. The, the games have to be there because people are gonna honestly. I. I talk to a lot of gamers and a lot of them are just like well what's what why do i want to buy these new consoles what's good about them they look to be pretty much the same as the other ones well, it's because, little prettier graphics well them you have to have the games to back it up well, they got games they've got you know battlefield they know, got watchdogs talk- they got diablo they've got yeah but they're all coming out in the old system assassin's creed <laughs> they've got uh, yeah i see you're doing <laughs> Yeah, I, Destiny. Oh wait, I will, Destiny. Uh, I will say that I am probably going to hold out another few months until Gamescom, at the very latest, TGS in October, for interesting Vita stuff to come out. But if nothing happens this year, software-wise, with the game, it's it's pretty much done Let's, with the with the system. And this is another piece of news that's completely glossed over as well in the wake of all the Microsoft chaos. You know, there's the Vita accountability, there's the Ubisoft software lineup, and there's the fact that out of every piece of hardware that is available this year, software-wise, the Wii U has the strongest exclusive lineup out of everything. It's and true. nobody is talking about it. Everyone's just like, the Wii U, yeah, that thing, that's, no, that's dead. It's like, did you not see the Nintendo Direct? Did you not see all of the first party games that are coming out this holiday season? Like, it is, it is by far and large the most comprehensive software launch for a piece of hardware this year. And yet, half of the internet is still battling over if the PS4 or the Xbox One is going to be better. And it's like, 
in reality, a FOP top tip, if you really want to get the most out of a piece of hardware this holiday season, it sounds strange, but buy a Wii U, because you'll have tons of games to play on it. It depends what you want out of a system. If you want achievements, you want a unified friend li- friends list and things like that, that's not what you want. Right. I mean, that you start to kind of like, you know, split hairs and kind of divide up like what you're really getting out of system. I'm trying to just, in general, just software yeah. titles, period. But yeah, you're yeah, right. You true, know, if you, true. You know, the Wii U does not have, you know, and Nintendo's still depends. trying to figure it out online. <laughs> and yeah. there's no achievements or anything like that. It's 2013, so. but... Yeah. They better figure it out before the next generation. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, <laughs> they should. They have it built in right there with their whole stars and all their games, all their Mario games. Just have a stars a thing. Coins. I think they, just, they might have that. It's got to be coins. Like they already do <laughs> that stars. with uh, Club Nintendo. When you sign up on Club Nintendo and you register your games, you get coins and you stack up a number of coins. And granted, they're more like yeah. currency where they go away yeah. when you spend them or whatever. But like that's always been Nintendo's thing is coins. Yeah, but like you said, I mean, the things you spend, they're not permanent things. I think stars is better, but we'll see because they're gonna do it. Yeah. They said they're gonna do it. I, I think. Can, so. I guess I can kind of see that. Maybe, maybe star coins. Maybe yeah. Meet you, meet you halfway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star coins. <laughs> um, I do, I do think that with the whole E three thing, because I mean, all this. Think about it. E three was a week ago. All this happened within a week, and now it's back to status quo for Microsoft, and everything's gonna be the same and. PS3, PS4 is going to be the same, and it's only been a week. We have five months until these even come out to try them. Yeah, I think it's just going to eventually blow over. All the nerd rage is going to kind of blow over, and then people are just going to play the games. And I don't think it'll be as big of a deal as everyone thinks it's going to be by the time the systems come out. No, and it, it definitely won't now that they've retracted a lot of the DRM stuff. Like if they would have stuck to their guns, I think it would have been a very interesting holiday season. People would have yeah. there been would have been plenty of people who blew over. There still would have been quite a few people who was, who would have stuck to the guns and not purchased the system, but now that they've retracted that, all those people that were complaining on the internet don't have, you know, a leg to stand on anymore. All they have is their well. Their, I'm gonna stick with pride. my convictions. Yeah. yeah, my pride's gonna be hurt if I said that I didn't want this, and now I'm gonna buy it. So, yeah, but Chris but even really... Chris even said that the other day. He's just like, you, you said that you're just like, well, I have no reason not to get an Xbox now. Yeah. <laughs> like when, Except for your pride. When, when not even my pride, dude. Like the only reason why I wasn't going to get it is because of all the online exclusive stuff. I didn't want to buy disc based games, which I still buy for my consoles, and be tied to online only stuff. Because yeah. that's just not the way I view physical media. If I have a physical media, I should be able to take it and do anything I want with it. Yeah. So that's the only reason I was against it. Digital stuff, go for it. I'm all for it. Yeah, digital stuff. It's all on my system. It'd be awesome if I could share it with my friends because it's kind of restrictive the way it is right now with digital media. But now I literally have no excuse not to get one if I see exclusive titles or titles that would play or look better on the Xbox One. Yep. So, And it's pretty much put it back on my list that I'm getting it this generation, maybe not at launch, but probably a year or two down the road. So, cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, man, it's been a crazy week. It has. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, oh, we got our E3 predictions thing to go over, but we'll do that next episode. Like I said, we're still trying to figure out what happened. I mean, mm-hmm. you're still, you at home are still trying to figure out what happened as well, but we're still trying to figure out what happened at E3 and what happened at FOP <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so bear with us. We're kind of borked it right now. So just hang in there. We're, we're trying to do the best we can. So, so. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's it for us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for episode 108 of the Fistful of Potions podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Brian, for joining me. And we'll see you next week for 109. Possibly I- on iTunes. Possibly <laughs> on iTunes. It depends on if we actually podcast on the 27th or if we wait a week. Mm, we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, bye, guys. Bye. See you next bye. week. Or maybe. <laughs> This has been another podcast brought to you by the crew at fistfulpotions.com. Questions? Comments? Please send them to mailbag at fistfulpotions.com. Visit the main site, fistfulpotions.com, of course, to subscribe to us through various outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes. And as always, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody.